we launched Nokri in 1997, and uh, prior to that, I was drifting for seven years doing a whole bunch of small stuff. So I've been an entrepreneur since 1990. That's uh, 26 years now. A lot of what I'm going to say is wisdom in hindsight. Uh, I didn't know it when we were doing it. Uh, we got some things right by accident, some things by design. We got many things wrong. Uh, but we kept at it, we got lucky, we were the right place at the right time, we worked hard, we worked smart, whatever. But we are where we are today. Now, so I'll make a, a few points. Uh, the first thing, sort of point I want to make is that, look, if you want to build a great company, it is the effort of a lifetime. You can't build a great company in two years, you can't build to flip and then say it'll be a great company. So if you look at the great companies in the world which have been created in the last 30 years, 40 years, Microsoft, effort of a lifetime, Bill Gates was at it. Google, 20 years out, the founders are at it. Oracle, any, any company you name, it is usually the effort of a lifetime by somebody, often the founders. Now, great companies, you know, typically they make great impact. That's the definition of a great company. That therefore, it's you know a product used by many people. It is something that inspires other people to do similar stuff and so on. So they create great impact. Uh, they often scale, and they usually, very often, outlive their founders. So some of the greatest companies have lasted 100 years. Very few companies have lasted 200 years. I think barring the East India Company, uh, which lasted 250 years, uh, I cannot think of any company that lasted 200 years. And that, of course, was on a state-backed monopoly. So it's very important for founders, for entrepreneurs, uh, to decide their ambition early. If you want to build a great company, you want to decide early on that this is what I want to do. And then be prepared to devote a big chunk of your life to it. So find that one thing that you want to do, that you want to spend your life doing and be good at it, is what I'd say. So we decided very early on that uh, you know, we would build and we would not sell. Now I think selling is fine, it's great, but it's not what we wanted to do. Because if you sell, what happens is the company then merges into something else, somebody else is deciding what you wanted to do, the culture, the identity, the ethos, that is usually now part of a bigger whole and eventually the brand goes away. Right? So if you want to build something that lasts, chances are you will have to not sell. Uh, and to do great things, you know, you have to be around. If you're not there, you know, you can't do great things. That's what we thought. When I was researching in the morning, I did a quick search and uh, I, I you know, found this page on uh, Forbes list of billionaires. I looked at the top 10 names. Okay. The top 10 wealthiest people in the world are people who never sold. There is one investor there, and we all know his name, and he got, he's a guy who buys and doesn't sell. The other nine are, have never sold. So even if you want to become wealthy, and if that is the aim, uh, you, know, you shouldn't be selling, you should be building. So if you want to make great impact, if you want to build a great company, and you want to impact lots of people, you know, you've got to scale up. Because if you're not running something of scale, you're not impacting too many people. Scale is about many things, right? Scale is about having a great value proposition, having a large market, having processes, having technology that's defensible, you know, uh, you know repeatability, solving an unsolved problem, a hundred different things. But fundamentally, scale or scaling is about letting go to the right people. Letting go is difficult for me. It's difficult for many entrepreneurs because entrepreneurs are so used to taking decisions, so used to saying, I'll do it myself, right? So if you've done that for five, six years and have bootstrapped, right, it becomes hard to let go. But, you know, I had to learn to do it. It took me two, three years after raising venture capital, having bootstrapped for 10 years. Uh, but, you know, we learned to do it. And the right people are important, which means that uh, you let go to the wrong people, you're in trouble. So you've got to get the right people on board and then let go to them. But the good thing about, uh, you know, the right people is that they will tell you to let go because if you don't, they'll go away. So fundamentally, an entrepreneur has to be a personal magnet for talent. That you have to be the kind of person who people want to work with.
And it's not something to be taught in a classroom, it's something you've learned growing up. Are you trustworthy? Do you communicate? Are you a good people's person? Do you share the wealth? Do you share the credit? Are you prepared to share power? So if an entrepreneur is a personal magnet for talent, he will get good people to work with him. And if you get good people to work with you, chances of success increase manifold. So we decided in the year 2000 that we would not sell and we would build. We had many offers, by the way, uh, over the next several years because, you know, Nokri was a decent brand, it was doing reasonably well. Uh, but each time we got an offer, right, uh, we used to say, okay, so if we sell, then what? What do we do? And I had this great fear of being unemployed, you know. And, and so I said, no, if I sell, you know, we will have money, but what will we do then? And our real task is to build a big, great company. And we may fail or we may succeed, or the company may be good but not great. We don't know. But if you're out of the game, you don't have a chance. So, so we scaled, right? And we, we got the right people, we got technology, processes, more customers, marketing, sales, service, everything, right? But once you've scaled and you've taken, uh, you know, and you've taken money from an investor. So the thing about, you know, Shraddha talked about investors. The thing about investors is, so I was actually very happy running a small company, you know, out of my house, right? And we would never have raised venture capital had competition not, get fund, not got funded. Competition got funded, we said, okay, we need money now. And we went out and raised the money. Uh, we got lucky, it was a boom time, bubble valuation. And so we met four investors, got three term sheets, you know, that time. Uh, and we were able to raise money. The thing about raising money from an investor is that uh, you now are on a treadmill. Every day you have to run twice as fast as you did the previous day in order to stay in the same place. So because the investor wants an exit in a finite time frame, because the investor's got to give money back uh, to his or her LPs, right? So uh, now investors put money behind you, early stage investors, venture capitalists, they put money behind you if they see a prospect of a 10x, 10 times return, right? So, there's this constant thing that, okay, I've got to double revenue, I've got to triple revenue this year, every year, right? Because you've got to give the investor an exit. Now, you can give the investor an exit by selling your company, which is what we didn't want to do. So the only other possible exit way of exiting the investor for us was going public. Now, going public has got its own, you know, logic, constraints, and so on. But there's a process, compliance, legal, and there's a whole industry running around it. So we, we did manage to go public in 2006. And life after going public, uh, you know, changes. In the beginning, you and your co-founders own the company. So it's your company. An investor comes in, you've got to have a mind shift. Now it is no longer your company alone. So you are not the only owners, but when you go public, the company owns you, right? Because now the public has invested in you. Uh, you have taken money from not one investor, not two investors, we have 13,000 shareholders. People have bought your shares because they believed in you. So responsibilities are different, but an IPO is an I guess an essential milestone in scaling a company and hopefully running it, uh, hopefully the company runs for maybe a few decades to come. I'll end here, thank you so much.